it's a whole new life. I dealt with loss of vision for many, many years before I, before it really had an impact. About six years ago, I lost all of my central vision finally, and I had to reinvent myself, which means my old, the only talent I used to have was playing golf, and I actually Googled blind golf, not knowing there was such a thing. And to my surprise, there was blind golf, and I dove into the first tournament, and from that point on, these are my friends. We don't talk about vision loss, we just talk about sports, and that's, that's why I like it. I think the guides for our golfers are the most incredible people on the face of the earth. I really do. The patience, the kindness, the love of, of just helping somebody. It just takes tremendous, tremendous patience. My name is Linda Port and my guide is Fred Port, my husband. It was like she'd landed at a new place. I mean, the toughest challenge, she simply stepped up with it and said, I got it, I got this. No problem, I got it. Uh, and so it immediately, the message to me was, she loved it, she loved the competition. And for me, uh, it very quickly became something that I, I thoroughly enjoyed. I didn't miss playing golf at all, because in a sense I was kind of playing golf just in a different way. My view would be that it is uh, strengthened our marriage. It gives us a, a joint task. We overcome an obstacle. If she actually hit a shot that is bad and says, that felt a little, how'd I do? I will say you went a little bit to the left. Because it doesn't, there's no advantage at all to her getting nervous or upset or concerned. So we simply head down the left-hand side and we come up with the next strategy. From her standpoint, we don't ever talk about bad shots. We simply talk about where we're going to go for our next shot and what's it going to be. My name is Chad Neesmith. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm a B1 uh, blind golfer. Uh, my coach is Andy Church, and uh, we've been together now uh, as uh, guide and player for about uh, 12 years, and we're now best friends. He walked into my pro shop one day asked me if I could teach him golf. I said, sure, why not? He said, uh, he said, well, I'm blind. I'm like, oh, okay, sure you are. And he was. I took about uh, two weeks. I said, you gotta give me two weeks. And I went out and kinda, I wanna say I taught myself how to play blind, but that's not what I did. I taught myself how to swing when I had something over my eyes, where I closed my eyes. You can't imagine how hard it is to teach somebody that's blind because that person is blind, not from putting the blindfold over their eyes, but from the time they get in the car that morning to get a ride to the golf course, from the time they wake up, from the time they go to sleep. So their orientation to the spot on the earth they stand or the spot on the first tee they're hitting the ball on a putting green is much different than the guys who orientation who just pulled a blindfold over his eyes. To be able to try and visualize what I'm trying to do without being able to see it, it's all about him communicating to me in, in a few seconds uh, a picture that I can see and then try to execute a shot. When you play sports, even visually impaired or blind, and you get involved with a team, that becomes your support group. You're not isolated. And that's what golf did for me, but unfortunately it was in my 30s. Um, I wished somebody would have put a club in my hand when I was 13 or 14, but back then blind people didn't play golf. We've known each other for approximately 18 years. Obviously when we first started uh, and somebody would bring him to my driving range and we'd go out and take a golf lesson, it wasn't a big deal to me. He was another golf lesson and I love all my students, but he was another student and so over time uh, it becomes easier to say, oh, I'll just, I'll bring him home. So there's a different, you're, a, you're adding to the relationship. So then you're taking them, dropping them off at home, and you're visiting, you're talking about your lives more, you get connected. And then you add to it that when you take that person home all the time, you see there's a house for sale next to him, and you buy that house. And now your neighbors, who you teach golf to, and you give rides to and from, and you start, you start becoming closer. 
and you start becoming fr you know friends, good friends, and you rely on each other for a lot more things. Uh, you know, you share your lives, you meet your families. You could say that somebody changed your life. Um, but he's changed the way I look at so many different things. How you look at somebody crossing the street, the troubles they've been through, the troubles they have, what you can do for them. So it changes you a lot. A whole bunch. And it's all for the better. Definitely. A lot of people, when they say, you know, when you say to them, I play blind golf, they think it's a joke. When I started losing my vision and I, I was playing golf, I was playing with regular sighted golfers and I started not being able to see my ball and slowing down the other golfers and it got embarrassing because they were saying your ball's right there and I'm like, I couldn't see it. And it got embarrassing to me to the point where I just dropped golf cold turkey. I didn't want to, didn't want to get embarrassed. I didn't realize that there was blind golf associations out there and I didn't play for 13 years. If you let it get you down, it will. It can be depressing and lonely. I know what it is to be visually impaired, and, and I, I'm, I'm older, but to see a child have that, it really sucks. It's about getting the word out to the 10-year-old child that's sitting at home visually impaired, or their parents who have no clue that there's golf, running, athletics, soccer for, for visually impaired kids out there and it's so healthy for them and so good for the mind to get out there, socialize, get involved in sports. They can be just as involved as everybody else. It's turned friendship in a lot of different manners. Um, when Brian and I were together, we went everywhere and we played golf together. It was quite impressive. He may have one disability, but he's got a lot of abilities. He did everything that everybody else did. I now have 24, 25 different golfers around the world that I can go play golf somewhere else. The opportunity to visit and spend time with them is something that I'm glad I get to still experience, even though Brian's passed. My name is Lionel Poinsonneau. Uh, my player is Jeremy Poinsonneau, my son, and we've been doing it for 10 years. It became a team sport. So we both are uh, winning, we both are losing. It's a, we go into it as a team. It's not what you expect for your kids. I mean, seeing your kids lo losing is sight and hearing, well, you know what, there's no cure. You're done. You're going you're gonna to be like this forever. That's terrible. And then seeing your son being depressed, that was awful. That was really a bad time. Golf helped him, you know, get his smile back on his face. He enjoys it. He really loves it, actually. We go to a tournament and it's, it's really a, a great trip. It's really good for the psyche. Ultimately, the intimacy of that relationship is they are absolute allies in every conceivable way. So when you go to a blind golf event and they present the award to the championship totally blind golfer, you will note every award is given to two people. Every award is given to two allies. They are, they're one unit. They compete as a unit in every single way. I realize that, you know, I don't have to sit at home anymore. I can take pride in, in being out there and trying a game that most people, if they're not good at it, they quit. And um, you know, the thing, I won't quit, and um, uh, he won't allow me to. So whether it's your brother, your best friend, your mom, your dad, your aunt, whoever, you, it's not, uh, they think you're doing something for them, but that's not what's happening. We hope that it's, it's something that children, blind children will see and visually impaired will see as a possibility in their life. Not that they get to the very top, but that there is such a thing for them to aspire to. They 
see without their eyes. They see with their emotions, they see with their brain, they see by working with their coach, they see having this tremendous confidence in their own capacity to execute. Vision for them is having the self-confidence to go out there and compete as tough as anybody you've ever seen compete. There's absolutely no difference. So this is not an exercise in people losing vision. In many ways, it's an exercise in people gaining vision. It's not become the champion uh, and win tournaments. That's, that's not the ultimate goal, just like in life. I want to leave this world and people say, like with the kids that I'm working with and stuff that are blind, that I made a difference, that I left it you know, better than when I started. It didn't matter what part of the world we were. It doesn't matter if we're at a muni track in Nashville, Tennessee, or Cartville, Illinois, or we're at Fort Myer Golf Links in Ireland. When he hits the ball good, that's the best part.